Hello everyone, welcome back to Math with Allison. Today we're continuing our integration series, so specifically we're going to be talking about Riemann sums, which is the big idea before we get into definite integrals. So here we have a function, I made up the function, but we also have the interval from 1 to 9. So let's go ahead and talk about the definition first. We have suppose a function f is defined on a closed interval a to b, which is divided into n sub intervals of equal length delta x. If xk is any point in the kth interval, and this is probably looking like a lot of nonsense, we're going to go through the picture soon, for k equals 1, 2, all the way down to n, then the Riemann sum for f on ab is equal to that whole thing. So what the heck does this actually mean? I don't even know. Actually, I do know, and I'm going to tell you about it. So first, let's look at our picture. We're on the interval 1 to 9, and we have a function that's defined on that interval. So look right down here. We have that n is equal to 4. So we are going to be working on four sub intervals of that of equal length. So delta x, as defined down below, is equal to b minus a divided by n. So we're trying to divide all the space between 1 and 9 to be an equal amount. So let's go ahead and do that. I get 9 minus 1 divided by 4 is equal to 8 divided by 4, which is equal to 2. So that tells me that I'm going to divide this into sub intervals, each with a length of 2. That way I divided it up evenly. Okay, so this is the fun part. Now that I divided up our interval, I want to go ahead and estimate the area between our function and the x-axis. And in order to do that, I'm going to go ahead and use rectangles. So there's different types of Riemann sums we can do. First, we're going to talk about left Riemann sums. So that means I take my left point and I make a rectangle out of it. And then again, I take my left point, this is going to be at x equals 3, and I make another rectangle. So I go up to my function, and then I slide over. Now I have a value 5 right here, so I take, I go up to my function, and I create a rectangle. And then we have one more at 7, we go up to our function, and then we create a rectangle. So what we want to do in order to estimate the area between our function and the x-axis, is we want to go ahead and find the area of all of these rectangles, and we want to go ahead and add them together. And that's going to give us an estimate. So we already know that the area of a rectangle is equal to the length times the height. So let's go ahead and talk about what the lengths are going to be. That is going to be what we originally solved for. So every single length that we see here is going to be a value of 2. So I know all the lengths are equal to 2. And remember, that was found by finding our delta x. Now we want to go ahead and find the corresponding height right? So we did left endpoints, which means I'm going to be working with that line right there. And so that height is going to be equal to f of 1. So I know my first rectangle is going to be f of 1, whatever that height is, times 2. And now we're going to go ahead and add our next one. So this height right here is going to be f of 3. So here we're going to add on f of 3 times 2. Our next height is going to be f of 5, whatever that function is equal to. And here we're going to add on f of 5 times 2. And then we have one more rectangle. We have all the way up to f of 7. So here I'm going to add on f of 7 plus 2. And so this is exactly what this was talking about. Here we have f of x1, which we plug in to our actual function and find, times delta x, which is equal to 2. And then we're going to add on the next one. So here we're adding on the next one, f of 3 times 2 plus f of 5 times 2 plus f of 7 times 2. So that's a lot of nonsense to just mean we're adding on the area of tons of rectangles. So we call this one a left Riemann sum because we're using the left endpoints of our interval. So let's go ahead and talk about a right Riemann sum. So um, we're not, I'm not changing anything here. I'm just going to do a right Riemann sum. So now we start with a right interval. So I go all the way up to my function. So this height is going to be f of 9, whatever that value is equal to. And then I'm going to go over to my other endpoint. And so here we have the first triangle. Now f of 7, I'm going to go all the way up to my function, and I'm going to create a rectangle. At 5, we're going to go all the way up to f of 5. We're going to go over, create our rectangle, and then we have one more. We go over to f of 5, and then we create our rectangle. That was a terrible drawing. But we get the idea. So now in order to estimate this area, I'm going to go ahead and take the area of all of these rectangles. So in this case, when we're working with the right sums, I'm going to go ahead and find the areas. Okay, so let's go ahead and find the height of our first one. So this right here is going to be f of 9. And I'm going to go ahead and multiply by the length. And the length of this is just going to be 2. 
And now I'm going to do that for every rectangle. So here I'm going to add on f of 7 times 2 plus f of 5 times 2 plus f of 3 times 2. So notice this is going to be an overestimation because we have extra areas on top that we're adding up. Last time we had an underestimation because we had space between the function and the rectangles. So those are the left and right Riemann sums. It's just telling you which endpoint we're going to start with. Now we have another one, which is called the mid midpoint Riemann sum. So let's go ahead and talk about what that means. Okay, so like we said, we already have all of our little intervals right here, 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 and here. Those are all our mini intervals. When we say midpoint, we're literally taking the middle of these points. So instead of going on the left or the right, I'm going to go to the middle. I'm going to go up to wherever the function is, and then I have my corresponding rectangle. So here we can see all our different rectangles, and I'll highlight them in different colors. So notice with these rectangles, every time that we're adding them up, we're still having four rectangles. We're just having four different types of rectangles. They, uh, they result in overestimations, underestimations, stuff like that. They're not perfectly accurate, but they're getting a good estimation. So let's go ahead and talk about these heights. The height of my little rectangle over here is going to be f of 2 because this value in between is equal to 2. So I have my height, and I'm going to multiply that by my length, which is equal to 2. And now right here, I'm going to have a value of 4. So I go up to my function f of 4. And there I have my midpoint Riemann sum. And so these are what Riemann sums mean. And we're going to go ahead and work this out in action. So first we have, we're going to find the left, right, and midpoint Riemann sums of our function x squared, which I already have drawn out right here. We're going to be working on the interval 0, 4. And we have n is equal to 4, which means I want to have four rectangles of equal length. So let's go ahead and dive into it. First, I want to find the length of all my rectangles. So I do 4 minus 0 divided by 4. This is equal to 4 divided by 4, which is equal to 1. So that tells me I'm going to have four rectangles, each with length of 1. Okay, so first we're going to go ahead and do the left Riemann sum. So the left Riemann sum, I'm going to start with the left endpoint, which is actually just going to be 0. So that one's not going to be very helpful. Here I have a height of 0 times a length of 1. So now we're going to make our next rectangle. We're going to start with this endpoint. So my height is going to be f of 1. But remember, we know what our function is actually equal to, so we can find f of 1. That's going to be 1 squared, which is equal to 1. So here I have a height of 1 times a length of 1. And so that's representing this rectangle right here. Now we're going to go to our next endpoint. We're going to go all the way up to f of 2. f of 2 in our case is going to be 2 squared, which is equal to 4. So here we have a height of 4 and a length of 1. We have one more here. We're going to go all the way up to f of 3, and we're going to create our rectangle. So let's talk about the height. f of 3 is equal to 3 squared, which is equal to 9. So here we have a height of 9 and a length of 1. So now we can go ahead and add these all together. This is equal to 0 plus 1 plus 4 plus 9, which is equal to 14. This right here is going to be an underestimation. Because there's space between the graph and the x-axis that we're missing every single time. So we're missing all of this stuff right here. Let's go ahead and set up the right Riemann sum. So once again, the base of our rectangles didn't change. I'm going to have four rectangles all just like this. And when it's the right Riemann sum, we're going to start with the right endpoint. So I'm going to start with 4, and I'm going to go all the way up to my function, and that is going to represent my first rectangle. So the height of this is going to be f of 4, which is equal to 4 squared, which is 16. So our first rectangle is going to be 16 times 1 plus, now I'm going to go all the way up to f of 3, and this is going to form my second rectangle. So f of 3 is equal to 3 squared, which is equal to 9. So here we get 9 times 1. And I'm going to keep doing that. So here I get f of 2, which we already said f of 2 is equal to 4 times 1 plus, And now we actually have a little rectangle down here. We get 1 times 1. So when I add all these up, I get 16 plus 9 plus 4 plus 1, which is equal to a value of 30. So notice here, in this case, we're going to have a big overestimate. And the reason that this is an overestimation is because look at all this area we have that is above our function. We only care about this area down here, and that's why it's an overestimation. And notice the difference between these two values. 14 versus 30 
is a large difference between the values. So now let's go ahead and talk about the midpoint. So once again, our intervals didn't change. We have one, two, three, four, each have length one. But for the midpoint, we want to go to the middle of these. So let's go ahead and go to the middle of our first one. It's going to be this tiny value, 0 0.5. And it's going to, oh gosh, it's going to be like the tiniest little rectangle, if you guys can see it. So actually, our height of this guy right here is going to be f of a half. So we're going to go ahead and square a half, and we get 0 0.25. So our first rectangle is 0 0.25 times 1 plus, and now I'm going to go halfway between 1 and 2, so I get 1.5. Go up to our function, and here we have another rectangle. So here we have f of 1.5 squared, which is equal to 2.25. So here we get 2.25 times 1 plus, and let's find our next midpoint. Halfway between 2 and 3 is going to be 2.5. I think we're seeing a theme here. I'm going to go up to my function, and here we have our next rectangle. So f of 2.5 squared is equal to 4.25. Okay, and then finally we have our last one. Halfway between 3 and 4 is going to be 3.5. So we go all the way up to here, and here we form our next triangle. And this is going to be f of 3.5 squared, which is equal to 9.25. Okay, I lied. 2.5 squared is 6.25, so that becomes 6.25 times 1 plus, and then 3.5 squared is 12.25, and so then we add on 12.25. So when we add all of this up, this is equal to 0 0.25 plus 2.25, so this whole thing adds up to 21. So notice that the midpoints gets us to a value that's pretty in between. And that's because we have a nice amount of area covered beneath the actual graph. But we also have a little bit of the graph that is a bit of an overestimation, like these corners. So they kind of even out a little bit. We're also missing some of the graph, like here and here. So they even out a little bit, and it's a more accurate representation. So that's how we would calculate the left, right, and midpoint Riemann sums. Let's go ahead and talk about an application of this. So here we have the velocity in feet per second of an object moving along a line. It's given by velocity is equal to the square root of 10 times t on the interval 1 to 7 where t is seconds. Using n is equal to 3 sub intervals. So here we're going to have three rectangles. We're going to find the displacement caused by evaluating the midpoints. And we're going to do this with Riemann sums. So let's go ahead and talk about how wide are our rectangles going to be. And we're going to go ahead and calculate that by calculating delta x. So here we take the endpoint 7 minus 1, and we divide it by n. This is going to be 6 divided by 3, which is equal to 2. So here we can see we're going to have a length of 2 for each of our intervals. I'll make these bigger so we can see the intervals a bit nicer. And now we want to talk about what type of Riemann sum we're doing. In this case, we're going to be using the midpoint. So I'm going to go ahead and draw those in. So we already know the length of all of these rectangles. It's going to be 2, 2, and 2. Now we want to find the corresponding heights because we want to find this area. So let's go ahead and take our first pink one. This is going to be equal to velocity evaluated at 2. So let's go ahead and find that. First, we have a velocity of 20, and we're going to multiply that by the length of 2. And now we're going to add on the purple one. So this is going to be a height of velocity evaluated at 4. And so this means we get the square root of 40 times 2, and then we're going to go ahead and add on one more. And this is going to be the velocity at 6. So this is equal to about 37.1. And now let's go ahead and talk about the units, because I'm not entirely sure what the units of this is going to be. So first we have the square root of 20 times 2. So remember, the square root of 20 was the velocity, because we plugged it into our velocity function. So this is going to be the square root of 20, and this was in feet per second. And we're multiplying it by 2 seconds. So the units that are going to cancel out right here is the seconds, and we're going to be left with feet. And so all of this is going to be in terms of feet, because it's going to do the same thing for each multiplication. When we have the square root of 40 times 2, this is velocity, so this is going to be feet per second, and we're going to multiply that by 2 seconds. So again, the seconds cancel out. We're just left with feet. So the displacement of the function is going to represent the distance between the start and the finish. And so here, this person has 37.1 feet between their start and finish. 
So notice here, this is the graph of the velocity. And the area between the function and the x-axis, so the area of the velocity, is position. So that's going to kind of lead us into our next video, so make sure to stay tuned for more. Otherwise, that's all I have for us today. If you enjoyed this video, I have many more like it, so make sure to check out my playlist or link down below. Otherwise, please give this video a thumbs up and comment other problems and topics you'd like to see done. Thanks for watching.